Hi guys, um, I don't know when this video is going to go up, but I'm going to do it anyway. I might actually put this video up before the or when I've already got banked. Um, I've already uploaded one tonight, but I'm doing this one as well now. Um, I don't know whether you've noticed, but there's a lot of YouTubers that have been addressing the whole YouTube is over party. Um, and the whole issues that I've, I have actually mentioned in my previous video that I'll link up above. Um, and a lot of people are actually making good points. Um, God, I haven't pretty much mentioned him every video, but Philip DeFranco mentioned something earlier today that makes sense. Well, yesterday, sort of. It's like half past three in the morning here, so I really should be in bed, but, well, I am in bed. I really should be asleep, but I'm not. Um, alright. The whole YouTube is over party. Obviously, there is issues with the algorithm, there is issues with... Um, the whole reduction in advertising rates, um, the fact we've had so many advertisers actually physically leave and stop being partnered with them, uh, with YouTube is a problem. However, A, it can be fixed and B, there is ways of running a business that can inc include YouTube, but isn't solely based on YouTube, and it's also indicative of how you spend your money. Right, I'll address the first is first issue once first. The whole issue of is losing um, advertisers. Now, this happens. This is happening for various different reasons. Yes, there was the whole Wall Street PewDiePie thing, which that's a different video in its, in, a, in and of itself. Um, there's that issue, um, which sort of started this. And then it, things have kind of snowballed, especially when you've got people that are advertising family-friendly stuff. However, their videos are on um, the Al-Qaeda and places like that. Then to me that makes sense that they want to pull their advertising. There are some channels that I literally look at and I'm like, what the hell? Now you can have a YouTube account without having a channel. You don't have to have a channel. Um, you opt in to have a channel. Now I have two channels. Um, I think I have access to three different accounts. I have access to my husband's account, but I don't use it because that's his account. So if he wants to do a channel at any point, he can do that. That's fine. Um, but for me, I have the two, this channel, my craft channel, and that's it on YouTube. Now, I don't make any money on either channel. Um, I don't make any money full stop. The only money I make is off my my books, um, which isn't a huge amount, which that's for the video that's banked, but I do address that in that video. Now, The YouTube restrictive mode can be is problematic and needs to be fixed. Um, I actually addressed this in the live stream I had earlier tonight over on my Twitch channel, which is down below, so you'll be able to see it there. And I actually addressed this where I said that um, essentially the restrictive mode is problematic because you're restricting th you're you're restricting a whole channel. Um, instead of just restricting selected videos. Uh, for example, I mentioned about um, the LGBT group, which are probably one of the hardest hit in the um, whole restricting mode thing. And how that that's wrong, I can understand some videos being restricted, by the, you know, like the ones where you're talking about tucking, packing, um, bind, binding, yeah, yes and no. But, you know, when you're talking about Tucking and and uh, packing. Um, I'll let you research that yourself. Uh, when you're talking about those particular topics, then I can understand the restrictive mode because that's the sort of stuff that you don't really want kids watching, or you know, you can understand people not wanting certain people to be watching that, or wanting themselves to be watching that. However, you're restricting the whole thing, so. Um, you're restricting them, people telling the stories of how they realised they were transgender, when they realised they were transgender, the signs they had as a child, etc. And 
you're doing that over multiple channels and like I say it doesn't just involve the LGBT but it does involve others and restrictive mode is problematic Philip Franco's constantly getting demonetized he's constantly getting restrictive mode enforced on his channel which to me is wrong because his his channel is a news channel where he basically people report a story through his reddit group him and his team decide which stories they're going to cover and once they've de gone through those different channels um, they then they, once they've gone through the stories they pick which stories then he researches the stories then he does the videos then he double checks his information then he releases the video now he's not the type where <clears throat> you get a bit salty because um, you you email a YouTuber because she's involved in a bit of drama and the YouTuber then doesn't answer you so you make an hour long video about, it, about her and you constantly delete the videos. There are two different things. Yes I am talking about John Cookie. You've got John Cookie who's literally deleting videos every other day and then you've got Philip DeFranco who is basically a news channel. Now I know there's a lot of things going on with Phil behind the scenes and some of it I can kind of understand and I can kind of get because there's a lot of business stuff going on um, obviously with the whole thing with SourceFed as well. It's an ongoing process. So, But he made some points that I want to echo which is, first of all, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yes, YouTube is a form of income. Yes, it can be a full-time job, depending on your fan base, you, you know, your your income, and etc. However, don't just rely on YouTube for your income. Um, this is the perfect way to explain that no business model will survive with just one client. It's the same general purpose. When you work for a, a company and that company has multiple clients each one of those clients will be charged for services so if you have one client and you charge them for services and blah 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 and then they get a cheaper deal somewhere else and they go you've no business um, this is also a topic I mentioned in my stream where the previous company I worked for which is like a small to medium sized company um, we had I think at one point I counted 32, 33 um, clients and we're not talking about you know like a pub or a club we're talking about big companies excuse me so these companies are when I say big I mean big um, I won't go into specifics but trust me the big companies um, and they didn't have one client they didn't have one source of revenue only one source of revenue so um as a as a, as a result you use more than one source of social media you utilize every single form of social media because in one way or another every form of social media can be a source of income um you can get money and income from twitter you can get money and income from um, Instagram, you can get money and income from Snapchats. Obviously, the bigger the fan base, the more money you're going to get and the more opportunities you're going to get. But the idea is still there, where you have multiple forms of income, you have multiple avenues of income, where you've got different areas where you're like, right, so I'm going to do, um, you know, you get a deal where they want you to take a picture on your Instagram for a certain brand, blah, blah, blah. You don't just rely, you, you go with Twitch, you now, Patreon, you get merch lines. Um, Phil explained a, a scenario where the, I think last week, he had a t-shirt um, that he did, which was the Appetites of Friendly t-shirt, and he actually got more revenue from that t-shirt than he did from the videos from the video that it was associated with um ebooks are a relatively good another good form obviously the more fans you've got or ebooks or books in general the more fans you've got the more revenue you can bring in from that education is important now this relates back to my another video which i'll pop up above sorry i keep knocking my mic um which is the whole thing of 
falling out of education, pulling out of education early. Um, people are really going to figure out, oh shit, we really should have stayed in, you know, we really sh should have stayed in education. If you haven't built a business around your YouTube channel and got multiple forms of income, whether it's through um, lectures and talks, um, live streams on other platforms and on YouTube, where, and you know, where you get paid for reviews and stuff like that. If you you haven't built a business around that, like Markiplier, like PewDiePie, like Team Ange, like the Just Kidding News guys, they've all built a business around it. They have multiple forms of income which aren't just purely related to their videos. Um, the Just Kidding guys, they have their videos, but they also have a gym. They have merch. Or should I say, what do they call it? I forgot what they call it. And they have a company called Golf for Broke. And, you know, they do a lot of different things. It isn't just the Just Kidding News videos. They do lots of other things. They do promotions. And, you know, they do deals and things like that. And they do do sponsored videos and sponsored ads and things like that. And to me that makes sense because they are utilising their business and they are very, very, very well rounded and very well educated businessmen and women. And they are building a business from nothing. And it's relating to their books. Um, we also, this is where we need a bit of input from YouTube. We also need YouTube to be more um, straight with us. We need to know why we are, if we're on restricted mode, why we're on restricted mode, what videos are on restricted world and why, if we're fitting into genres and certain genres are on certain tariffs of um, income and ad rates, we need to know all that. We need to know all of that and we're not getting to know all of that because nobody's sharing it at all. So we need to figure this out. We need to figure out what's going on. In on that, we need more clarity. We need need more transparency with YouTube on that fr front. Um, this is another one that relates to a previous video I've done, which is spend your money wisely. Um, I have mentioned this before, but I have noticed a lot of family vloggers, particularly some of the younger generation, like my age and younger, that don't spend the money wisely. Um, they will go out and buy a million pound house three choice. Yes, you can probably figure out who I'm on about from this one. And they've got people that look after the kids. They've got, um, you know, they're very realistic with the kids and they spend most of the time sitting around playing on computer games. Right. Okay. Yes. And th then they, they go and do weird things for the vlogs, which is fine. And then they, you know, it to me, it doesn't make sense that it, if you're getting in income, right, I'll actually um, check those social blades, actually. Social blade. Blade. Let's have a look. Right, let's have a look. Estimated income yearly is between 122,000 and 1.6 million. They're with Make Studio. Um, they do have a lot of income, which is fine. Um, the daily averages are between $285 to 4000 Fine. So their income is still on the up and up. However, we don't know how long it's going to last because the thing with particularly with vloggers is they fall out of relevancy quite fast. Um and a lot of I I used to watch all the family vloggers, this particular one, um and several of the friends and I've stopped. Um primarily because A they've lost their relevancy and everything. But also you need to think about things in a proper manner. Now 
if you have a business manager, they will help you with all this. However, you need to be careful with that as well because you need to be careful with your trust because there are lots of business managers, um, like the issue that Adore Delano is having, um, where they may they they can take advantage because they have that power. Um, the issue is we have a lot of people, I've seen it happen, where they get into money, they buy this big house, they buy new furniture, you know, they've got... Um, top of the line computers cars the whole lot fine but it's not sustainable and then they crash and then they they lose the money it happens to hollywood stars um how many times has donald trump been made um declared bankruptcy how many times has um you know like eddie murphy another example there are a lot of people that they don't spend their money wisely and then they think they realize at some point, oh crap, we should have really done better with this, and then it comes around and kicks them in the behind. Now, you need a good manager, you need a manager that you can trust, you need a, a group around you that you can trust, which a lot of people don't have. You also need an MCM that you can trust. Now, MCMs, I don't deal with them because I'm, I'm only a small channel, um, it's all got my subscribers. I have 22 subscribers. Um, just one sec. Which means I'm down a subscriber. Oops, I must have annoyed somebody. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm at 22 subscribers. Now, last time I checked, I think it was at 23, so I've lost one, which is fine. Um, but there is a lot of people that are very much they get the money and they're like oh I've got money and then go and spend it and then a couple of years later like oh crap you need to be careful with the way you spend money if say for example one of my videos was to go viral and I made say Seven hundred thousand of it. Obviously, I'd have to pay taxes on that. Um, then I'd move out of this house and get another house, which I actually own. Um, and I would then, you know, I would then make my life fairly comfortable, but I wouldn't go too far. Now, what I mean by that is, here in the UK, our houses are relatively small because we are only a small island that is extremely overpopulated. Now because of that literally the house I live in is half the size of the house I grew up in and I think it's a quarter of the size of the house that my husband grew up in um, because we grew up obviously we grew up in two different parts of the UK but at the end of the day I would not buy a house unless I knew I could sustain that if I owned a house outright and I moved in then because I know I'm not paying a mortgage I'm not paying rent I know I'm only literally paying council tax and bills, then to me that's sustainable because my, my husband would still be working. So it would be sustainable. However, I would not go out and buy myself a house that's too big for us and the, the council tax alone would crucify us. I wouldn't do that. Um, it's one of those things that you learn to live essentially within your means and a lot of these youtubers they're thinking oh we've got money so they buy these big houses and they move into these big houses and they build this they build that they build this and it's like and a couple of years later the channel dries up i've seen it happen and to me it's one of those things that youtube isn't over we just have to reassess how we do things on youtube if you want to be seen as advertiser friendly you might have to change your um content i have this which does some of the controversial videos and some of the videos that could potentially be clinked, deemed as um problematic or oh, i hate that word uh but you know as, as as issues for other people which is fine and then i have my other channel which is literally just craft i don't do anything like this i just do craft on that channel what you need to remember is 
going forward, if you are wanting to make money on YouTube, obviously I don't make money on YouTube, but I have a f reasonable understanding of the way YouTube works. Um, my takeaway from all this that's going on is you need to be careful how you conduct business, particularly on YouTube. But I wouldn't just rely on YouTube. I would rely on multiple forms of income, whether it's sponsorship, whether it's deals, lectures, talks, books, anything. You know, streams, whatever. Just don't put all your eggs in just the one basket because it is not a good idea. Anyway, I'll leave that be for tonight. Um, I don't know which video. I might do another video. I might do that one. I might do that one before I crash. And, um, and then um, I'll probably make this live later on this week. But that's my 10 cents. Take it for what it's worth. Um... But if you were wanting to make money on YouTube, just be careful for the slog and the hard, you know, the the constant having to work. Um, but like I say, I do enjoy it. I do enjoy sharing my opinions with people. Whether they take anything away from that is, be, you know, is besides the point. But let's just do better. Let's help each other. Let's try our best to be kind. So I will see you soon. Bye.